Good evening. Please welcome Pedro Almodovar. <laughs> Blanca Suarez, Carlos Arites, and Miguel Angel Silvestre. Miguel Angel just arrived from the airport in this moment. <laughs> Pedro, welcome back to New York. Oh, thank you. I feel really, really at home <laughs> here with you. Oh. <laughs> Great to have you back. Pedro, uh, talk about why an airplane. When did the idea about doing this on an airplane first happen? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, you always, you know, the artists, you know, the ideas are always very mysterious. At least for me, I don't know why I start writing something. Um, so I, sometimes I write for fun. Uh, so this is how this uh, this script um, <coughs> I started. Um, I, I started at the beginning uh, writing the sequence that happens in the cockpit. Um, uh, they were very, they were very funny uh, and very crazy. And, and immediately after, then I wrote uh, several sequences that happens uh, at the galley. But you know, it was like 20 pages. I did, and they were, they were funny, but that that's it. Um, and I I thought that it was a good material just to to keep it in uh, in the desk. But my brother and also part of El Deseo, our company, uh, read that 20 pages and they they pushed me to make a a, a long feature script with that. Um, so at the beginning, it was more. Um, I mean, the, the the airplane and something happening in the uh, on the earth. It was like 50 and 50. Uh, but uh, during the rewriting, uh, I mean, just the the earth only uh, remained the story of Blanca, because I wanted also just to have a link, almost a, a supernatural uh, link between the plane and and the two lovers here um, and the, and you know when when I was when I was just thinking that I that I was having on a script I um, really I, I like the idea of making a kind of tribute of the dedication of the 80s that it was so important for me I mean it is the it was the moment that when I start <coughs> shooting and, and also it was a very important moment for Spain um, with the new democracy and all that. I, I think that I, that I got a kind of nostalgia of my youth, of the Madrid of that period, and also of the Spain of that moment. One of the things that struck me, many critics have spoken about how the film reminds them of your early comedies, the first films you made, but it also seemed to me to be almost a tribute to an earlier generation of Spanish comedies. I was thinking especially of Berlanga and Forqué and some of the great Spanish comedies of an earlier era. Well, yeah, you know, Berlanga, <coughs> Berlanga is it's a master that is, is always there. And the, um, I mean, it's our Billy Wilder. Uh, and for, I think for every Spanish director that try to make a comedy, it is impossible to avoid the influence of Berlanga, even more than Buñuel. I mean, just for this kind of circumstances, he is not so well known here, perhaps because his movies were very talkative. Uh, and it was almost impossible. They were at least five people talking at the same time. And it was impossible to translate into subtitles. I, because, you know, sometimes I ask why uh, Luis García Berlanga is not so big than, than he deserved out of Spain. So, I mean, for this comedy, I mean, this choral comedy, you know, the, 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 the influence of Berlanga is, 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 is very evident because he was specialized in that, exactly in that. Also watching the film, it seemed to me, in a way, even though you've done films like, say, uh, All About My Mother or other films that have a real theatrical 
milieu that this is really your most theatrical film in a yeah. way. And I'm, I'm wondering, could you talk a little bit about this film and theater? Mm. No, but I, I, I mean, but I hope that someone asked me, you know, to make a musical for Broadway. <clears throat> you know, the three, the, the three stewards really belongs to this kind of Broadway musical. Uh, they are what we call maestro de ceremonias. Um, master of ceremonies. Master of ceremonies, which is a typical, you know, gay character for, for musical. Um, curiously, what I, what I, I, I mean, I read it spontaneously, but when I think about it, uh, as also, I mean, Berlanga is one of my masters, but also for this type of comedy, you know, my model is really the skewable comedy. Uh, and that is very American. Uh, and many of that comedies were based in uh, Boulevard plays, Fado and all that, all that. And you see, you see that the origin is, is the theater, but at the same time is completely cinematic. So when I, that happened to me also when, uh, when I wrote and shoot uh, um, Women on the Bears of Animus Breakdown, that um, for that kind of a story, it fits very well just to have a unique location. Um, so, I mean, it helps to the dynamic, the dynamics of the, of the, of the plot. Um, and also, I mean, in that case, it was someone with many problems in, in women. And here, just the, 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 the problem they have, the, that they, it creates this kind of tension. It's always, I mean, it's, it's very good for a comedy because push all the character to react and to make something and to talk and to, I mean, just to spread themselves, to fuck each other, <laughs> to, I mean, to, to, to make up many things. Uh, because, I mean, when, I mean, the movie talks, there are many things, but also is this kind of loneliness. For me, I mean, the contemporary loneliness is yet if you are not connected to anything. So um, that you are alone, that there is not any kind of a screen that you can watch. Uh, so that real loneliness now, that you don't have your iPhone, you don't have your iPad, you cannot see the TV, you cannot see videos, then you are alone. You are alone and in front of yourself and also in front of the others. So I need, this is a big speech, but anyway, I like it. If you are, I mean, if that's, mm, I mean, you, you get bored, just let me and a change of, of subject. I can do it, you know. I have mm, many other species if you want. So, I mean, no, no, I was telling that, you know, you, me, everyone, needs a level of fiction every day. And uh, if you take a plane, I mean, the fiction usually are in this kind of tabloids, which are very interesting, uh, in touch, uh, National Enquirer, you know, these kind of things, uh, or just to make, I mean, just to see three movies. Um, but in this case, you know, they, the fiction they is not available. So they become, or they became, the real fiction for the rest of the passenger. So when they talk, everyone is listening. And you know, words are very important, but are very important not only in the way to express yourself, that also is the best way to entertain the others. So this is also the roots, the roots of theater. So I didn't want to avoid that. So for that reason, there are many, many, many shots when you see the red curtain that reminds you just the theater. That's it. I, I promise to be <laughs> shorter the next time. <laughs> shorter, is okay to yeah, say that? That's good. Let me turn it over to our actors and ask all of you what it was like working in this film in which there is this kind of theatrical atmosphere where you're playing off each other so much in all the different roles. Wherever Miguel Angel, if you want to start. Miguel Angel, with this, uh, you can talk Spanish, and he's a wonderful translator. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna try to speak in English. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 well, it was it was very exciting. It was very exciting because uh, 
there were in some of my scenes, for instance, there were many actors in the same shot, and Pedro has decided in that moment to shoot it in just one shot. So uh, there were, um, we were rehearsing a, lo re rehearsing a lot, and there was some, some uh, very excited energy in the atmosphere because you, uh, there were many conversations at the same time and um, well, mm, <laughs> <laughs> he's jet lagged, come on. <laughs> but he's not sexy. So, I mean. <laughs> no, it was, it was very excited. And the, the good thing is the, the rehearsals. We could rehearse a lot and we could prepare the scene. And when he thought that the scene was prepared, we went to the set and the, the um, adrenaline, the adrenaline was there and it's a good way to work. We, we, I had so much fun. Carlos? No, he said, you, you know, the, the, the key word, <laughs> that is that we rehearsed like two months uh, during the pre-production and everything was like uh, choreographed. Uh, because if not, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very small place to shoot. So, I mean, I have much more confidence with everything, I mean, everything uh, rehearsed in advance. So they knew absolutely what we are going to do and everything. Do you do rehearsals first, just line readings before you bring the camera in? Yeah, well, it was not, I mean, not be, be, um, I mean, we, we rehearse in, in our, in, in one place that we have, in El Deseo, like putting seats, and I rehearse the whole script. And also, at that moment, I adapt many things, and I change some dialogues. <coughs> and when we were uh, in the studio, we, we again uh, rehearse, but um, being very secure about what was happening there. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, this kind of spontaneity that it should be in one movie like this is just always the, the product of something with a lot of work before. So, uh, I mean, for the, the choreography, for example, uh, the three actors were, uh, were rehearsing after being, I mean, until the choreography was very clear, like one month in one studio. Uh, but um, but in, in this case, they were very generous, but also, you know, at least, I don't know if that is possible to make it here. But in Spain, on and with them, and in general, when, when with all, all my movies, they they love to rehearse. I mean, they don't they don't think, oh, this is one month that we are working, and perhaps I mean, you have to pay me more because I come in every day here <laughs> and do the work before shooting. No, they 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 love to rehearse, and um, because it's, it's good for all of us. Bueno, Carlos. Um, we were talking about uh, how it was today. About yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, about yourself well, and your character. To me, the movie, um, it was very comfortable because um, to shoot in just one, one place, uh, you know, uh, we have the bathroom very, very near, and that's a very important <laughs> thing. Bathroom? Yes. In in what sense it was very important? No, because, because <laughs> you were laughing all the time. No, <laughs> but you know, um, I I I am that kind of person that mm, suddenly needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> there's other movies I've made that I didn't have the bathroom, the bathroom. <laughs> close to me. It go, it wasn't near. And I regret. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, I, I, I was very happy. <laughs> you know, I, my stomach is not my best friend, okay? <laughs> so that's the one thing I can tell you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pedro. <laughs> 
I'm happy to hear that. I'm very happy to hear that. I didn't know, but it's true that we took care of you a lot. <laughs> many restrooms and many dressing rooms and everything. Yes, it was in my contract. <laughs> it was in your contract, okay. Carlos, tell us about the dance sequence. Tell us about your rehearsal for that. Uh, the, dancing <laughs> the dance sequence, um, it was funnier in the rehearsals. <laughs> but then you have to make it and looks, uh, and you have to make it look uh, some kind of professional, and that was the the worrying part. Um, when when Pedro the first time saw the choreography, uh, he told us mm, it's 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 too good. <laughs> You have to make it worse <laughs> because um, it, you are not supposed to be a professional dancers. You are just three very very guy girl uh, <laughs> friends. Uh, this is the kind very of queenie. I I I learned a word for that is queenie. Queenie. Yes. <laughs> I asked for that because I didn't know how to how to say that in in English. A uh, queenie of uh, fl flamboyant. Flamboyant. <laughs> flamboyant is nice. Yeah. We've been learning some vocabulary just <laughs> to make just to make this Q and A. So, can you believe that the we we were doing it bad because we were doing it very good? <laughs> That's what Pedro it's, told us. So. It's true, it's true. And it's true what, what you said. I mean, it's the same case. I don't want to be compared with uh, Woody Allen. Um, but uh, when Woody Allen made uh, Everyone Say I Love You or something, this, I mean, that movie what everybody sings, um, um, uh, it was, uh, let me, let me, oh, come, I, mean, I don't remember the name of the actress. And it's, um, Goldie Hound. Yes, Goldie Hound that uh, uh, sang better than the others. And also, she almost looked like professional singer. And Buddy said, no, 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 no. Try to do it worse. Because, I mean, it's funny if it's bad done. And in this case, they enjoyed so much making the, the choreography that they wanted just to go directly from the studio to Broadway. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 my love, this is not the case. Uh, but above all, Javier Camera was perfect. And, uh, and then I said, I, I said basically to him, I mean, I want you to, 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 to see you exhausted, tiring, that you cannot reach the place. But I and was. And then, then it was <laughs> much more, much more uh, funny. And, uh, but it was true that, well, <laughs> <laughs> and then they start making it very, very like for a musical. Pedro usually uh, told told us uh, very often in the in the dancing part, mm, it has to it has to look more Bob Foss, you know, more this, more <laughs> Bob Foss. No, that was Madonna in this case. Yeah, well, okay. That was Bogin, Madonna. <laughs> no, sometimes do you remember things because. They always tell me things that I said during the shooting that I don't remember. <laughs> I, 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 I'm in a kind of a trance that I, so it's, it's good, it's good to, I mean, to talk to them because all of them remember me things that I completely forgot when I'm, when I'm shooting. Do you remember, when, when for example, what I, what I told you when, when you were doing this in the, in the playback? Um, yes, you were telling me I had to look um, less Angela Lansbury. Yes. <laughs> and more Greta Garbo. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but I remember. <laughs> and you remember something else? Yes. About the other sequence? Yeah, about the other sequence. Uh, one of the last days of shooting, uh, just at the, uh, when we are at the airport, and we just uh, have uh, came down uh, from Landing. the. We have uh, just land from from the from the airplane, and I'm with the other stewards. 
Stewardesses. Stewardesses. One of the stewardesses. <laughs> I mean, you mean the female. Yes, the, the female, the female girls. Um, <laughs> One of them was um, a young girl that uh, she only had uh, one sentence, maybe in in the whole picture, in the yes. whole in the whole movie, and probably she thought mm, one sentence is is very is very few sentence. Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something else. <laughs> so yeah, she I'm say what something else. Ah, something else. So besides uh, sh b besides her line, he he thought. I'm gonna say something else. She, uh, she, she was, <laughs> she was going to say something else. So we, when the take was over, uh, Pedro uh, came to her and and told and told her, um, these new words you have add to to your role, very good, very good, but to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Do I say that? But yes. I'm not rude with the act. No, no, no. Very kindly. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it was six in the morning. <laughs> okay. Blanquita, uh, tell something. Come on. I think I'm going to uh, speak in Spanish because it, w it will be faster and easier, maybe. In Spanish? No? Sí. Sí, sí, sí. Can I? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Poor thing. She's so obedient. <laughs> eh, en, en esta película, um, in this film, as in the other film I made with Pedro, I felt I was almost in a different film from everybody else. Parte de la propia película. Mm -hmm. en, en The Skin I Live In. In eh, that film, eh, I sort of uh, ended the film just when everybody cuando, else was starting, and in this one, película, I started the film when everybody else was ending. I only really got to know everybody once the film was done and we went out and we're doing interviews and presenting the film and it's been great. I'm really very uh, proud to be part of the film. I think my part is really in a sense uh, a moment uh, when the film it just has a little bit of balance where the spectator needs to sort of get out a little bit from what's going on on the plane and sort of take a little break. So I'm very proud that that's my part in the film and I've been very happy to, to be part of it. Y eso a mí es como que me hace sentir muy orgullosa de mi parte de la película. Thank you, Blanca. <laughs> bueno. Bueno, so, Richard, yes. Say. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Well, I thought now we would ask if the audience has some questions. Do you see this film is perhaps a, a move towards a, a film that's in a certain way lighter than your the last few films which have been somewhat heavier subjects. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I wanted to escape um, because as I said before, um, <coughs> uh, I don't know exactly why I made this specific movie uh, and not the uh, other one. Um, but it's true that I, that I, I suppose to have a strong reasons to do it. Um, anyway, in general, I mean, in this, in this, in this century, uh, I wanted to return um, to a genre that 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 I was very familiar to it, and you know that represented my beginnings <coughs> in the eighties, and uh, I wanted to make a comedy just in the moment that I got the right script. So the, it, I, I I felt like to do it. Like in the last ten years, I, then I, when I when I got the idea and when I when I have the the, the script that I I thought it was enough good to just to shoot it, then I wanted, and you know it's uh, I mean it's it is it's wonderful just to see that and to hear the people laughing with a movie, and especially now that that times are so difficult, uh, um, it is 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 casual, but I'm glad that in Spain. Uh, I mean, the, the, the audience can go and to see an, a comedy. But anyway, um, mm, anyway, for, I mean for, for the director, 
it doesn't mean that, uh, I mean, a comedy is not an easier genre than thriller, noir, or drama. Um, I mean, it's, it's wonderful just to, to hear and to see the atmosphere of the shooting because they were really enjoying every single day, every single line, uh, the new things, because um, we, I mean, I improvised a lot and gave them, uh, gave them every day new, new lines. And uh, so that's, that's great uh, because there is a lot of joy surrounding you. But, you know, the, 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 the comedy is a very, I don't know how to say it, fragile or frail. Fragile. 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 Yeah. Fragile. Uh, because, I mean, the story is not as strong, for example, as that is the skin I live in. I mean, in, in the skin I live in, even if something is not like exactly what I dream of, still there is a deep and sometimes awful, but very strong story uh, to tell. Here in one comedy, the story is much lighter. So everything needs to be very precise. Above all with the actors and with the rhythm. I mean, what we call the tempo. Uh, and that is very hard when in this case, I mean, I was, I was working with like 12 actors at the same time and that was new for me because usually, uh, then I, I realized that when I was shooting, usually my, 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 my movies are sequence of two or three uh, characters at the same time, not 12. So it was, I mean, I, I experiment, I tough time during the shooting, uh, but it should be seen in the, in the movie. That movie should, should, should give the idea of, of something very light, um, <coughs> uh, and it is. But for one director, I think it's almost the same. I, I really, because, I mean, one, uh, it doesn't mean that when you make a drama, you suffer. I'm the director. Uh, no, I mean, when I make a drama, I, I enjoy it very much doing that. And uh, it's not because I'm sadistic. No, it's the, you know, I mean, you're happy with, with the result of what you are doing. And, uh, and also, it sometimes it doesn't mean that uh, when you make a comedy, you are happier. I mean, in this case, I was. Uh, I was because of them, but this is history, and I don't want to, I never talk about that, but for example, during the shooting of Women of the Earth, of a nervous breakdown, that it was a comedy, and uh, I'm very successful, I can say now, uh, 23 uh, years after, but it was a hell, <laughs> a hell of shooting. Uh, so, I mean, you shouldn't see that, and I'm not going to explain you why. Uh, just in the case you ask me. If you ask me, <laughs> you want me to, to tell you? <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> no, because it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's someone is. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it's not, it's not. <laughs> I don't want, no, no, someone is involved, of course. So, so I mean, the, the, so the thing is just to, um, I mean, when you have problems or not, uh, when you're happy or not, uh, in my case, is like to feel that uh, the bad things, the good things, the bad time, the, w the best times, uh, that you identify with that, that you don't feel any distance with that. And I felt that way in, with all my movies. I'm wondering, in Spain, do audience react much to the line about Opus Dei? You know that um, that is it's very uncomfortable for them to listen that, to listen to that, um, because I mean I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know if the Opus Dei members uh, used to need uh, the service of a dominatrix. Well, that <laughs> in any case that that make them more human, um, <laughs> but um, g going to Mexico. Because I mean, working with two Mexican guys, I mean Daniel Jimenez Cacho and uh, here uh, Jose Maria Jaspic, and I talked to them, 
And then I discover, and they 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 explain me, they explain to me that they are. I mean, the, the Opus Dei in in Mexico is very how can I say popular. That there are a lot of members, and in Spain, of course, they are. And above all, now with the popular party, that is a right right win. Um, I'm talking about the the, the party that is in, in the government. Um, so I mean, this was like a sweet revenge with them because I mean coming from from Mexico they are called legionarios. Then Cecilia Roth only said and also the legionarios. It's, 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 it's a kind of joke because in Spain legionarios is just the people that go to uh, yeah, to make the military service there. Uh, the legionaries, yeah. Yeah, the legionarios. But everybody knows that she's talking about legionarios de Cristo Rey, which here are sort of Opus Dei there, yeah. founded with someone incredibly corrupt uh, called Marcel Maciel or something. Mm -hmm. uh, that he was really an evil. So it was a kind of sweet revenge for me and, and also a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, when I saw it, I saw it at a critic screening and myself and one other person really reacted to that. And everyone looked at us like, what are you uh, reacting to? Because I don't think a lot of Americans necessarily got the reference, but anyway. I was wondering in Spain, it must have been. Yeah, much, no, no, there much is, stronger. of course. There they know. Mm -hmm. We have time for just one more question. Yes, right there, right in the middle. Uh, this woman is a, a, a therapist, and she's wondering, especially about the depiction of drinking and drugs in the film and the levels of addiction that you talk about and that you show in the film. Were you trying to say anything about that in your film, about drinking and drugs? <laughs> we're, we're trying to say <laughs> something. Si quiere, si quería decir algo sobre adicción de drogas o de alcoholismo en la película. Okay, bueno. <laughs> <laughs> no, eh, bueno, voy a hablar en español. <laughs> eh, que decir, en, es, en este caso, en, que decir, en, en, en la, bueno, la película, primeramente... No, as I said before, this is really a comedy, so you're not really supposed to take things very literally. In many ways, this is really an homage to the decade of the 80s, uh, years that I really spent uh, in, well, not in Spain, but especially in Madrid. And those were years in Madrid where my friends and I really did a lot of drugs. Uh, <laughs> We, drugs were really everywhere. And I want to say right now, I never drank. Nunca he bebido. Never. <laughs> don't ask me why, because I don't know. Um, entonces, de algún modo, es un homenaje a aquella década donde hacíamos todos estos excesos. I'm frozen. <laughs> no, no, and, and, and also the thing is that, you know, there is a, a panic moment. Mm -hmm. And then in that moment, or you take a pill, or, I mean, just to get relaxed, uh, or you, you have a drink, or something like that. I mean, you need some help. Uh, but, but of, no, but I'm not talking about the problem of being alcohol, alcoholic in which is the case of the sobrecargo, how do you say? I mean, the, 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 the steward, mm -hmm. the place by Javier, uh, Javier Camara. That of, for him, he is really, I mean, an alcoholic. And he is struggling uh, against that. Uh, but I mean, for poor thing, in one moment like this, it is very difficult for him just uh, to get, um, like that, I mean, to get dry. Um, and, but also, you know, is, I mean, alcohol in, in comedies, um, this is also an element, I remember many of them, I mean, I don't know, for example, Blake Edwards, um, the movie that made with Kim Basinger and Bruce Willis, called? Blind Date. Blind Date? Blind Date, yes, Blind Date. Uh, in which she, she were all the night with um, uh, two pieces of um, red color that I, that I imitate in women for, for Carmen Maura, these two pieces. Uh, so, I mean, don't she became crazy when just a little drop of alcohol. 
So it's an element of comedy. And uh, it's, uh, as so, I mean, this is, this is what, uh, this is the meaning of alcohol on the drugs that they take it here. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think about, about, yes, of course, I mean, the party. The party, uh, the party was again, again, uh, Blake Edwards. I mean, the whole movie is, is, is about watching Peter Sellers and the, the waiter getting drunk and more drunk and more drunk and more drunk. And I, I don't think about the issue of alcoholism. Uh, alcoholism is in um, the long weekend of Billy Wilder with uh, Ray Milan, yes, mm. and, um, and it was uh, it was the same thing, but treated in another way. But in the, I mean, the, then then we say I, I try I try at least uh, in a humble way that uh, the alcohol here is more it was more like an element like in the party of Blake Edward. Okay, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Pedro, thank you again for oh, coming. Oh, you're welcome. Blanca, Carlos, Miguel Angel, and thank you very much for coming as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>